Welcome to the ringside of the Alexandra Pavilion, where a big crowd are eagerly awaiting a heavyweight contest that's captured the imagination of fight fans all over the country. Marvis Frazier, the son of the former world heavyweight champion, smoking Joe Frazier, against the unbeaten Funzo Banjo, who tonight aims to show Frank Bruno that he's the best heavyweight in Britain at the moment. Well, victory for Banjo would launch him into the world rankings. Defeat for Frazier really would be a major setback. Remember, he was beaten by Larry Holmes in a challenge for the world title. He's had a couple of victories since then, but can't afford to put a foot wrong tonight. As for Banjo, he's a very awkward opponent, and he knows that this is the most important night of his career so far. Well, the big moment is approaching. I've been talking to both fighters. First, Banjo, what's his mood? Uh, winning mood. I'm ready, you know, I just want to get the fight over and done with, so I can uh, sort of relax. There's perhaps a few boxing fans up and down the country who don't know a great deal about Funzo Banjo. What have you got to prove tonight, do you think? Well, I've got nothing to prove, really. I've just got a lot to show people who haven't seen me before. Simply because I haven't had television ex ex you know, exposure, so now I'm going to get here and people are going to see what I'm made of. Very important night for you. What exactly do you stand to gain? Oh, everything, really. Everything. Absolutely. Marv, it's a very important night for you. What kind of frame of mind are you in? I'm in uh, an excellent frame of mind. Uh, right now, I'm just concentrating, uh, getting ready for banjo. What do you know about uh, Funzo, and uh, what's your approach going to be tonight? Well, we're going to go out the first round. We're going to move. We're going to see what Van banjo is all about. Uh, from what I've heard, he uh, has a very good jab, good overhand right, so I'm going to be looking for those things. And in your corner, your father, smoking Joe here. You've been through all this before, Joe. What's your last advice going to be to Marvis? Well, my last advice is uh, when the bell ring, the man to give you instructions from the middle of the ring, it's time to go to work. Be alert. You're really going to go to work, and I think around the phrase your camp, you've got this catchphrase uh, of what you're going to do to Banjo tonight. I'm going to pluck his strings. Well, that's the confident mood in both camps. The two fighters coming into the ring in just a couple of minutes. We'll take a break and then join us for what promises to be a really fascinating heavyweight contest. The big fight, it's Marvis Frazier versus Funzo Banjo. Our commentators, Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. So there's Marvis Frazier now and the family pushing their way through the crowd here at Alexandra Palace Pavilion. And of course, cousin Rodney had a win in Gateshead. Marvis says he's enjoyed his training here. He's a dedicated lad. But he's got to give away quite a bit of weight tonight. And you'll see the, the former great man himself smoking go somewhere. There's Rodney, the cousin, also a heavyweight in my opinion could go on to be world class but hiding the face there but for no apparent reason of course but just not to be distracted there he is marvis fraser son of the man in shocking pink the fraser flat clan and uh, there's been quite a little needle whipping up between these two. It hasn't all been publicity and promoters hype. And it's a big chance then for this big fellow. We'll find out whether he can really do it tonight because there's no question about it. Frazier's a league above anybody else that he's fought. But he's unbeaten and you can't knock an unbeaten record. And there he is warming up there, Marvis. Last time we saw him on ITV, of course, he outpointed Joe Bugner in Atlantic City. There he is. Big shoulders indeed, isn't he? You can see unbeaten in 14 fights. 15 stone, seven and a quarter. So here's the master ceremonies, Mike Shinfield. One of the greats of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, the former heavyweight champion of the world, smoking Joe Frazier. Of course, the big hand for the old man, Smoking Joe. What great fights he had and what a great fighter he was. Looks like he can still do it, too. Now, gentlemen, please, ladies and gentlemen, this 
is the main event on this evening's program. Frank Warren presents an international heavyweight contest of 10 three-minute rounds. Between, in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Walthamstow, Ponzo Banjo. Well, certainly getting his share of support there, Ponzo. And from Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen, Marvis Frazier. Well, we can see which way the crowd's going. Banjo scale, 15 stones, 7 and a quarter pounds. Frazier, 14 stones, 8 and a half pounds. The referee for this contest, Mr. Harry Gibbs. Timekeeper, Mr. Ray Rice. And it needs a heavyweight referee here, Harry Gibbs, to handle these guys and keep them in order. Handled world championships, of course. So we're going to find out now whether the church deacon from Philadelphia and the tribal chief son from Nigeria. Most unusual pairing, that, isn't it? Whether Funzo Banjo has managed to get along without fighting anybody really potent and whether Frazier can overcome the big man. He's, he gave away 40 pounds to James Broad, a top-class heavyweight who incidentally knocked out Bone Crusher Smith. And uh, that was a good performance by Frazier to outpoint him. And again, he gave a lot of weight away to Joe Buckner, of course. But as I said, you can't knock an unbeaten record and who knows whether Banjo can just drop a punch on the chin of this fellow who's now getting into the world rankings again after the disaster with Larry Holmes. But even so, he was still actually on his feet in that fight, Marvis Frazier, when he was taken out in the first. Fancies his luck a bit, Fonzo Banjo. He's, he knows he's been criticised a lot for often being in dull fights. Has admitted it publicly, which you've got to hand it to him. He's punching hard enough, I tell you that. And Frazier's walk-in style's made for him. Unusual one for Harry Gibbs. Must be surely the only British referee who's refereed the father and son because he handled Joe Frazier and Joe Bugner in London. is making enough noise as he throws a punch there Banjo he might be actually tipping Frazier off when the punch is coming well he looks all kind of casual with a minute to go in the first round Jim Banjo yeah thankfully he's putting some power into his punches which is nice I thought he'd maybe a wee bit cautious in the first round but he's throwing big punches yeah I'm wondering how Frazier's going to cope with the, the awkward style Banjo has Actually, the Frazier people weren't that mad about taking this match. Uh, but promoter Frank Warren talked them into it. He said, you should be able to win, probably, but it will be a good fight. And that's what it's all about. That's what the customers want. But there have been times when uh, Banjo's sort of stood around a bit too much like a statue. And he can't afford to do that with this fellow because he is a busy fighter, Marvis Frazier. He will be as he warms up if he doesn't run into one. Oh, that was the one that got away, almost broke the lights, that one. I get the impression that Marvis Frazier is a lot smaller than his father, but that's not so. Right on the bell, he was, he was clubbing at the end of the round there, Jim. Yeah, but it was a good enough round for Banjo. I think he'll be quite pleased with that, that's a good opener. Uh, he was throwing good punches, and the big wild uppercut he was throwing could do him a bit of good if it, if it lands. A wee bit wild, but... If it lands, it looked like a plenty of power in it. He almost got knocked over by the wind of that punch missing. It really was a swipe. So there's the rundown for Marvish Fraser. Then the only one he's lost, of course, was to Larry Holmes, which was for the International Boxing Federation version of the championship at the finish because uh, the WBC, WBA didn't go along with that one. And there's the old man saying, this is how I want you to do it. If only he could fight like that, he'd be OK. A very disciplined lad, actually. And there it is there, Fonzo Banjo, as I said, son of a chieftain 
from Nigeria who has educated public school in Scotland. Second round on these very old-fashioned corner stools. In fact, they're so comfortable I may want to stay there. Now, Harry Gibbs saying when I say break, stop holding on or punching on the break and break clean. It's always good to assert a bit of authority early on there, referee. Come back from refereeing a fight in Japan, Harry Gibbs, last weekend, the World Championship. So now let's see whether Frazier can bustle into this big man. Instead, he gave away a lot of weight to James Broad and Joe Bugner. Tell you what, this is the most active Banjo's been in his fights, Jim. Yeah, well, I think the best thing Banjo can do is push Frazier back because Frazier has good rhythm, he lets punches go well, but he's not so effective if he's pushed back. So Banjo should try and push him back as often as he can. Looks as though Banjo was having a bit of a moan about the borderline punches there, I'm not sure, he was certainly talking. He's doing the right thing, laying on there, trying to tire Frazier a bit. He's had two fights since he lost to Holmes, by the way, Frazier. One, one round knockout and then uh, beat a good fighter. Oh, he's leaning on there, almost breaking his back with that. And Certainly Frazier's had a bit of a problem, he had a pinched nerve in the neck and he's got a rather nasty scar where he had to have the operation, kept him out for over a year. He's definitely talking a lot there and I think uh, Harry Gibbs would probably have something to say about that. Not that Frazier can understand a word of it, I suspect. What do you think he's probably saying there, Fonzo? Jim, is he complaining? I heard, I heard him saying no problem, I think he's just trying to say Frazier out, no problem, he's shouting. But he's certainly messing Fraser about, he's not letting him work inside, he's holding him and then he's clubbing him when he gets him against the ropes. I think it's going to be a couple of rounds before Fraser manages to, to get any clean work done. He's getting a bit uh, argumentative with him now, the referee says break when you're told and means it. got to keep some work rate going Banjo because that's been his problem in the past the southern area champion and now the official contender to David Pierce if he does fight again for the British Championship so there's uh, Marvis Fraser then 24 and his brothers are really jumping up and down outside there, Rodney the cousin, and young Joe. And Joe Frazier really gives them the full treatment between rounds. He's got a couple of English seconds to help him, Mick Williamson and Ernie Fossey. But he's, there's a great bond, of course, as you would expect between father and son. As you say, OK, do this, do that, OK, Dad, he's saying. He calls him Sir quite frequently, which I always find great. So, actually, Joe Frazier was not that much bigger than Marvis, really, because at his peak he was 14-11. And uh, this coming up 14-8 and a half. Round three. Round three. Scheduled for 10, this heavyweight clash. And I must say that uh, I've often been very critical of Banjo, but he started off well, at least he's thrown some punches. Sometimes he's, he's really been in there and been close to being arrested for loitering. But he's sticking some good leather in there. He's, he's going for Frazier's body the whole time. It'll need a good one there because he's, he trains so hard, Frazier. He takes the punches downstairs. Still going square on, Fraser Jim, isn't he? He's running into shots, but he's also starting to get through. 
Yeah, he'll start to get through now. Eventually, he'll, he'll solve Banjo out a bit better than he's done. He'll have to busy up a bit. He's not throwing enough punches, and he's allowing uh, Banjo to tie him up inside. Banjo's not allowing him to work. He's grabbing his hands all the time when they get up close. But I think eventually, Frazier, a little bit of class will come through. He's often had things a bit his own way, Banjo. Not, not against you, Roy Curry. That was a close one at Wembley. So I'm wondering whether he'll get a bit demoralised if things are not coming off for him there, if he's not uh, stopping Fraser in his tracks. Yeah, well, I, I get the impression that Fraser hasn't really got to work yet. There's no rhythm in his work. He's normally... Uh, he has nice, nice rhythm in the way he moves around in his punches, but he's been messed about all the time. But uh, Banjo's given him plenty of problems. He really is an awkward man to fight, and he's so big. Six foot five, remember? Primo Carnera was only six foot five and three quarters, and we thought he was a freak years ago. Oh, hello. The referee, take time off. And I thought he... I said, I think you would tell uh, Banjo we don't need what Harry Good would call the rabbit, the talk. Minute to go, and he's still talking in there. He's not exactly saying much, he's just... He's trying to say, come on, and he's throwing a punch as though he's so pleased with himself, Banjo. I dare say the referee will visit the corner at the end of this round and remind Banjo that only he does the talking. See, the point is now, Jim Fraser's taken most of his best shots and now he's beginning to fire back. Yeah, and he's getting behind Banjo's elbows now with the body shots. Some nice punches going into Banjo's rib cage there. But he's still messing them up. As soon as they come close, Banjo's grabbing them, not allowing them to work. Very awkward man to box. A nuisance, as they say in the trade. Well, he's looking very calm and collected there. As his trainer rubs him down there, Funzo Banjo. As I say, he came to London uh, and then went to Scotland when he was only 11. Had three wins in the first round, a third round, and one in the first. But of course, they didn't measure up at all the glass of Frazier. They, this fellow's been dogged a bit like a flu carrier, really. No, nobody fancies fighting him too much. And there goes Harry Gibbs now, going over to the corner, as I thought he would and say, listen, you know, behave yourself, I'll do the talking. It's a good contest without you having to do that. I'm sure that's what he said. So back to the lecture. You'll notice that the, the English seconds there are not saying anything, they're leaving it to Joe, who would argue with him. Fourth round. I would have thought that uh, Fanzo would like to have kept Frazier at bay a little bit. It doesn't suit him inside, Jim, does it? No, it doesn't. The banjo landed a good right hand on the chin, but it didn't shake Frazier at all there. I wonder how that will affect him. But he's just tying him up all the time. He's never been under this pressure before now, Fonzo. We'll, we'll find out whether he can stay the course well. We've got the, the Frazier family behind us, Rodney there, and I'm uh, certainly not going to tell him anything. You ever seen the size of him? so often uh, certainly the people at the back of the hall here encouraging banjo when he opens up with a few shots but there he goes he's, he's completely completely stand on top of him Frazier now this is where he's opened up Jim as you were saying earlier when he gets yeah. that rhythm going he's a yeah, bit the tasty punches, the punches are flowing now a couple of good left hooks have landed bang on his jaw uh, this is more like the Fraser we expected to see Right up the middle, Marv, when you get a chance. Right up the middle. 
So right up the middle, Fraser is saying, his cousin to Marvis, punches right inside those long arms, if he can, of Banjo. Sinking those now. He's going to warn him for that one. He's quite right. And I think Marvis agreed with that. And a uh, little sporting chat there, but that armistice won't last long. Bit clumsy. They're kind of inside of the glove gym, aren't they, from Banjo there? Yeah, well, I think Banjo's done everything he can do, but Fraser's just getting warmed up now. I expected a little bit of class to come through. It started to come through slightly now. But, uh, ba Banjo's running out of ideas a bit. Up the middle, up the middle. Wide open for the uppercut, KO. There you go. At least to his credit there, Banjo has been having a go. And I've said, uh, I've seen a few of those and really you could have done without him. He's been standing around and posing and always threatening. But nonetheless, winning. And he's left Frazier in his own corner to save him the walk back. That'll help. These American fighters normally take time to work into a fight, Jim, particularly this type of fighter. Yeah, and I don't think the opponent suits Frazier tonight. It's uh, too awkward. They're not used to them. The Americans are not used to this type of opponent. They're not used to that distraction either between rounds, I don't think. So there's Rodney, what have you made of it so far? That seemed to be your brother's best round. Yeah, it was, a pretty, it was the best of his round. Mr. Banjo, he's, uh, he fights and then he holds. He seems to be a dirty fighter. He's not... Every time he throws the uppercut, they're thinking it's getting through, but Marvis is catching those uppercuts on his arms. He wasn't getting off in the first two rounds, but this round and the last round, I give the Marvis pretty close. If he just keep banging on Banjo in the body, by the sixth round, he should be on his way out. Seconds out, round five. Into the fifth round. And uh, I must agree with Rodney there. He, he, Marvis is sort of warming up to it now, right, putting them together, uh, having taken Banjo's best shots. I'm wondering whether he's tending to perhaps demoralise the big man. And he certainly jarred his head back with that left hook. So he took the uppercut there, Jim, and came straight on, Frazier. Yeah, well, Fraser's getting into range, but he's taking too long to get his punches off, and he's allowing Banjo to grab hold of him. I'm surprised. I thought as soon as he got into range, he would be letting the uh, burst of punches go, but it was too slow there. Well, oh, he's laid some right hands in there, Banjo. Some of them must hurt. They're not always delivered with the inside, but when he does, they, they crack on a bit. Got a very big fan club, always been a good ticket seller. The thing is, Fraser always knows where Banjo's head is, Jim, doesn't he? He can always sort of keep his head down and then whip that left hook, knowing the fellow's got it stuck up there like a bit of a weather vane. Yeah, well, uh, the tall heavyweights suit the Americans, they can throw the, the hooks over the top. It's not been a great round for Fraser so far, he's coming into it better now. He's holding and hitting it, he's leaning on him there. Quite right, he's pushing him down, that's, that's quite painful when a strong man does that to you, Jim. Yeah, well, a uh, 15 stone man, not half. still like to see Banjo keep it a bit more at long range. He's got more chance that way. He's not winning too much inside. Half a minute to go then in this round. And now he's daring to drop hands a bit, Marvis Fraser. I'm not sure that's a smart thing to do. This game, one punch can change everything. Started to really slow a bit now, I think, Banjo. Jim. 
Yeah, but I don't think Fraser's done anything to be proud of in this round. He's been doing the press, and it hasn't really like, it landed one decent punch at the beginning of the round, and really nothing else. Not, not a good round for Fraser at all. Well, there don't seem to be any uh, problem in that corner. They're all looking calm and collected with uh, Hanzo Banjo. Eddie Byrne on the outside of the ropes there has worked with a lot of good class fighters. And hopefully that uh, staunching pad there won't, uh, won't be needed for any cuts because I shouldn't think that would happen. And uh, old Joe really getting quite excited in that corner now and trying to calm the lad down and say let's do it this way let's do it that way must be there must be times when the old champ says I wish I were in there doing it for you son he didn't encourage actually Marvin Fraser to fight uh, I mean the son of a millionaire who'd want to fight but this, this lad wanted to do it round six and both final second hanging on to those stools as long as they could That's the game. If Banjo keeps him off like that, he's, he's really having to struggle a bit, Fraser. He may look and feel confident, but he's not scoring. Oh, backhander. Got to warn him for that one. Almost a pivot blow, that was. Once more, and you're out. You could read that from the back of the hall, and I'm sure Banjo could. That was ridiculous for him to do that, Jim. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit strong for a professional fighter to do that, so obviously. Tuck himself inside those awkward arms of Banjo, Joe Frazier, trying to work to the body. And while it's a very big chance for Banjo, it, uh, it really puts Frazier out of all reckoning if he loses. He really stops you from doing things, Banjo, Jim, doesn't he? It's so awkward. Yeah, he's up with the box. He it's, see, it's difficult. He's messing Fraser about all the time, but you couldn't really call it scoring. What he's doing is holding and cuffing and pushing around. He's making it difficult for Fraser, but as I say, it's difficult to, get, to score him points for the work he's doing. Yeah, he's putting those together well now, Fraser. But he hasn't backed off, Banjo. It's all spasmodic stuff, isn't it, now, from Banjo, Jim? Yeah, he's still... He, he's doing the right thing now. He's pushing Frazier back, using his weight advantage, but everything he does is clumsy. I think that right-hand uppercut looks a bit more effective from the back of the hall. Well, I hope he doesn't have to disqualify this fellow, because he doesn't deserve that. I mean, he's, he's contributed to his downfall if he does. I've never seen one disqualified for pushing the man down, Jim, before. Well, he's, uh, he's already getting calls from the Frazier family there. Rodney saying, I'll knock you out if I fight you. But I don't think he's interested in that at the moment. I think he's uh, more interested in taking care of Marvis. Have a look at some replay there now. See this, and you see the back of this backhand coming in now. I think from the back. there it is. Look, a mile away. I mean, you, he didn't know. He didn't send us a telegram of that one. It was a postcard. Round nine, scheduled for ten.
at times when uh, Harry Gibbs tends to be just a bit lenient perhaps with him he's, he's trying to encourage a good fight and then of course he really lays into him with a bit of heavy referees verbal when needed but obviously the, the visitors as they say they might have a moan about that amazing with this big fella banjo Jim really because it's very powerful looking and that there are times when he's sort of almost stricken with athletic senility isn't he, he just stands there yeah he, he doesn't have any rhythm when he's punching they're just clubbing swings really he's only swinging he's not punching from the shoulder and the hip well, the crowd like that and Frazier does it As you say, they're more or less arm strength, aren't they? Yeah, they're just swinging, clubbing punches. They're, they're, not, they're not properly delivered. Back off Frazier's class would have come out by this time. They would have found an answer for Banjo's awkwardness, but he hasn't managed to do that at all. Well, it's not easy being a chip off the old block. Banjo getting a bit of encouragement now, a bit of chanting. Minute to go in this round. I wonder if he's saving it for the last banjo. He's opened up a bit more here than he did early on. almost ignoring those body shots he must be fit yeah he's in good shape all right so I believe those flurries of banjos are nullified by the combinations that Frazier puts together afterwards they're not powerful punches but they're always in there nagging away Joe Frazier there doesn't seem to be too excited. He's obviously figuring that his boy's in front. But, you know, fighting away from home, as they say, you could never take chances. You've got to go in and really convince that referee. No judges, of course, for this one. Let's have a look now at the replay now. You see, he's not bad with those. He's, he's still cuffing a little bit. And that's very tiring for Frazier as he goes in and he just leans on him, the big man. And that sort of power, you really would have thought he could have dropped Frazier by now, at least stopped him in his tracks and sent him back. Seconds out. That's a big man. Tenth and last round. So tenth final round, and Harry Gibbs calling them to go through the formal touch of gloves, almost like the pleasantries that are exchanged before you get in the dentist chair. And the crowd really lifting them at the Alexandra Palace Pavilion. Well, there's one thing for sure. I think the Frazier family are going to be a bit surprised that uh, young Marvis at least had to go ten rounds and fight all the way, whatever happens now, Jim. Yeah, I think so, but it's made me wonder how Marvis is going to cope at world level with, with the lack of power that's pretty evident tonight. I don't think he has enough power to be a, a world-class heavyweight. Well, old Banjo saved a little bit for the last round, but he's also having to take some. He really has Take sunk those left hooks to the body, Fraser, the whole time. But he, he really, even close up to the ring like this, Jim, he hasn't flinched too much, Banjo. Yeah. Fraser's never managed really to upset him. He's never hurt him at any time during the fight. I think his ribs will be a bit sore, Banjo. That left hook to the body has been consistent. Uh, 
Johnny Banjo could sustain his punches a bit, Jim. They're all in spurts, and then he stops and has a breather or tries to while the other fellow gets on with it. Yeah, he doesn't work enough. But all the pulling and shoving and hauling, I think, has taken a lot of energy from Frazier. Frazier's looking pretty tired as well. There's not any snap in his punches at all. Minute to go. <laughs> well, there you are. The Rod Rodney Fraser's not pulling his punches, not the verbal ones. There, he says, calling out there to Banjo, "You look like my sister break dancing." Thirty seconds, and still, of course, without knockdowns. And looks as though it might be a bit too late then anyway, but uh, neither of them really look like scoring the knockout. Last 10 seconds. There it is. Frazier is the winner. Just sheer effort, volume of punches. It's a bit of booing from the back of the hall, Jim, but I think you had to give it that way. Yeah, no any clean boxing we saw came from Fraser, you can't really argue. Banjo never really had a round where you could say he definitely won it, but Fraser had three or four where you could say, yeah, well, he certainly won those rounds. So I think that's a fair enough decision. And there's Rodney. It's actually his cousin. He's uh, Joe Fraser's sister's son. And that's Burt Cooper, an 18-year-old heavyweight behind Fraser that's worth watching. He's already had a one-round win here. And that's little Joe, the lightweight, who fought Peter Eubanks and lost to him on World of Sport. Well, it's all friendly at the finish. Fair dues from Funzo. He came to have a go. He put a lot more energy into it than he has in recent fights. And now Rodney's taunting him that I wouldn't mind fighting you next. And I think he means it. There's the old man now. What a good picture that is. And I tell you, the Fleet Street boys will be popping away at that one. They'll like that. My boys Ladies done it again. The referee scores the contest. Banjo, 97 and a half points. Frazier, 98 and a half points. Well, he's won it by a full point, which is two two rounds on my card, Jim, that right? Yeah, that, yeah that's right. No, that's about fair enough, I would think. He's come out with a bit of credit, Jim. Maybe we thought uh, he wouldn't fight quite as well as that. And uh, promoter Frank Warren saying to Banjo, OK, you, you fought well, it was your first big shot, and you can come back again, no doubt. So there they are, then, posing for the friendly pictures after the battle and it's always good to see them finishing up like that because it got a bit testy before the fight and uh, I don't like to see the gladiators doing that and uh, here's Jim Rosenthal then talking with Fraser Marvis, Marvis what was your verdict? I won the fight I plucked his strings <laughs> were you happy the way you finished the fight there or would you like oh, to done it a bit quicker? Well, Banjo's a good fight. I can't take anything away from him. He was hard to hit, hard to catch. And uh, that's the way the fight turned out. The main important thing is that I won. Right, we heard your brother Rodney saying that he reminded him a bit of your sister break dancing. That might be a bit of a slur on you, not putting him away earlier. Well, like I said, Banjo's a good fight. And once again, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he gave me his victory. Good, OK. Well, Joe Fraser, let's bring in Joe here. Joe, were you happy with your boy's performance tonight, or do you think he should have uh, ended things rather sooner? Well, uh, Banjo's a, a very uh, clever uh, fighter, you know what I mean? Uh, he keeps pulling back on shots, and uh, he's, no, he's no dummy. He's very smart. I see what he's The body shots, I like to see him taking my little heart with the body shots, but therefore, he was hunting me with bad pulling back with a shot. Do you occasionally look across at a fighter like Banjo and wish your son had a physique like that? <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. You know, I mean, I, he should go. Well, once he leaves the fighting world, he can always go to Marlon Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that uh, Marvis can still go all the way and win that title? I think title? Marvis can go all the way. There's no doubt about that. Uh, this is his second fight, and uh, he showed me that he can go to distance. 
I mean, we, we, this time we're going to look for guys. Otherwise, we're going to be working on different status of, of guys and not out about boxing them. Just dig in and work. Good. Thank you very much. Smashing to see you here. I'm sure you'll be back next year because you've all had a great reception. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. So here's uh, Banjo coming across now. He's got plenty of breath left, I hope, to talk to Jim. Well, so your, your first defeat, your, fir your first defeat, but our commentators gave you quite a amount of credit for your performance. What do you feel about it? Well, in my corner, they kept telling me I was ahead. And I believe that was winning the fight. But it is shows you. I feel really bitter, I must say. But it happens to everybody, you know. You live and fight again. Really? You were being told throughout that you were ahead? Well, yeah, they just said to me, just keep your boxing together. Don't try and knock him out. You don't get tired. Keep your boxing together and try and come in the last round. Which I did try, but he's very fit. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for me, I lost. Are you then a bit surprised at the verdict? Um, well... If I listen to what my colonels were saying, yes, because they were telling me I was ahead, and I firmly believed I was ahead, so I was sort of, if you say boxing clever. But despite this defeat, do you think this could be something of a springboard for you? Because you got the yeah. crowd behind you, didn't you, it's which is a change. Experience. It's a, it, it was a tough fight, which I rarely ever had before, you know. It, it's an experience, and I think next time I'll perform better. Good, okay, well done. Congratulations, anyway, sorry it went the wrong way. Thank you very much. Yes, Marvis Frazier triumphant, but I think we're still going to hear quite a bit more of Funzo Banjo. We'll take a quick break, then it's more exciting boxing action, this time from the new British Light